good snowy morning this morning. As you can see, it's snowing behind me outside. Uh, this video is going to be particularly for shops uh, so that you guys can share with either your shop or so the shop can get an idea uh, as to what's going on with this cheap fix. Because I'm getting a lot of people calling me that are requesting you know, a place to do it. They want me to find a place to do it. I don't know where to have it done. I honestly have no idea what shop you could use or where you could do it. Uh, there is a few times when I get shops that buy the tools for me that are willing to do it, but it's kind of far and few in between. And what's happening is the shops are scared to do this fix. The reason they're scared of this fix is because they think it's a temporary fix and they believe that it's not going to work, basically, is what it's coming down to. And I want to talk a little bit about that because this is a gamble. I mean, it, it honestly is. It's a gamble. But if it works, it saves a ton of money. And I personally feel like it's a worthy gamble. The reason it's a gamble as well is because if it is unsuccessful, the shop is going to charge you, the customer who's having the shop do it, whatever they have into attempting to fix it. Now, there are two things that might happen. One of which is where you release this lifter, okay? So the lifter releases and you're successful at it, but it collapses right as soon as you start it. Now, then you would charge the full price to uh, uh, do it, you know, as far as, as whatever your, your labor. I usually charge between three and four hours depending on particular circumstances, some vehicles are a little harder, uh, but but you're gonna charge some time to do this. You're gonna have to charge either an intake valve cover gasket or both, and then you have to charge to do the turning off the displacement on demand. Now, all those things are gonna have to be paid for by the customer, whether it's successful or not, because your time is worth money. You have to explain to the customer, it is a gamble because there is a chance it's not going to work. I've had a couple that haven't worked. Uh, most of them do work. And the thinking it's a temporary fix is not necessarily true either. Now, there is a possibility that this roller is damaged if the person has been driving with that lifter knocking for a long time because it may be bouncing off the cam lobe and creating a little flat spot or something, damaging it. I have not seen it yet, and I have nobody that has proved this theory yet. But it seems like a valid theory, and it is possible. And if that happens, they'll find out later down the road when the cam lobe wears down, but at least they were able to drive the vehicle for some time. Uh, also, there's a possibility that you might not be able to release this lifter at all. I actually had one recently, and uh, I'm going to throw links to all these videos. So the one that I recently had that I could not release, I did a live video on it, and I will be eventually doing a full video of doing the process on it as well. Uh, it's not out yet. I still have a lot of footage to go through. I'm so far back on my videos it's not even funny. But uh, we're going to throw up a video right now for the displacement on demand trick, how to use this tool. And this tool is available from me, but you could also make it yourself. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw the video that has the building the tool at the very end of the video. It's a long video. So being a shop, you might want to try and find the sweet spot of how to use this. It's probably somewhere in the middle of the video if I remember correctly, but it's been a little while since I made that video. Now, uh, the making the tool is at the very end. You don't have to do the mini forge thing that I did. You could even use just a torch to do it if you wanted to soften the tip. Um, the only reason I suggest softening the tip is to try and keep from damaging the side of the lifter because these are hardened, I believe. So I would hate to have that hardened surface damage the side of the lifter. Uh, furthermore, that video also has me damaging this lifter by attempting to do it with a soft metal. So I thought, you know, I don't want to damage it. I want to use a soft metal. I attempted brass. It didn't work. Uh, so that's, that's what happened to this lifter. There's a little damage on it. Now, all the rest of them I've attempted, even one that I used this tool on and I had to do it several times, and it would not take. I beat the ever and snot out of it. It appeared to have no damage done to it by the tool. Uh, I had to keep reforming the tool because I kept beating up the tool, but the lifter is so hard on the side that it did not damage the lifter. And as far as this being a temporary fix, the cool thing about this is the only reason these lifters get stuck collapse 
is because they're stuck in a shelf here. And since they're stuck in that shelf, once you release them, these locks that are in here, which this one's kind of, there we go. These little locks that sit in, inside of here, there's normally a spring holding it. This one doesn't have the spring and it's missing a lock. But uh, those locks are what beat up the shelf in here and then that becomes like a expanded metal and it sticks to this. So it's normally a, a precision fit, right? And that precision fit gets squeezed tight on the lifter. So once you release it and you get those locks to engage again, and there's a trick to that too, and I'll throw that video above as well. Uh, that one has the little trick that I have learned on how to make sure that this thing, if it does release, you're able to get it to stay. So hopefully you don't have to put it together and then it collapses again. And uh, I have confirmed that that's a very successful way when they try and collapse again. Um, also, you're gonna wanna turn the motor over. There's all kinds of little tricks. Uh, if you want, just feel free to start watching videos. Once you're educated on it, you'll know how the system is working. I have one of how the system works above as well. There's all kinds of little things. I've been learning a lot about these DOD systems since I started these videos. Uh, my first video is the most popular video because that's the one YouTube is pushing. It has probably a little bit of the least, probably the least information in it, and I'm not going to even link that one on here because of that. Once those locks are engaged, they will not dis or, or this lifter will not collapse again as long as the displacement on demand is turned off. If it's turned off and the VLOM has been modified, link for how to do that and why to do that above, I'll put two links. There's one of explaining that you should do it and then there's one that is explaining how to do it or actually me doing it to one. And once you do those things to this thing, there is no chance that this will collapse again. So it is a permanent fix. As long as the roller is not damaged, it is a permanent fix. Uh, and again, I have not seen a roller get damaged yet. Uh, I've seen the rollers damaged on non-DOD lifters and cams, but I have not seen one on the DOD cams. I don't know if these rollers are better. I, I have no idea. Maybe the low profile is a little more gentle on the valve train. I'm not sure why, but I have not seen one with bad lifters or cam yet. Uh, so I'm sure it's out there. There's no question about it. Maybe you have seen it. I don't know. Maybe you as a shop have seen it. But regardless, make or buy the tool. Feel free to release it. It will not cause you too much headache. Just make the customer aware of it being a gamble. And that's pretty much all I can give for you. So check out all the videos in the links. Click the little icon in the, in the corner over there. So click the little icon in the corner. It'll drop down the menu. Use your mouse scroller to scroll through all the videos that are linked. And uh, I'm going to throw the playlist link below in the description. So if you just want to click on the playlist, it's all my videos related to displacement on demand. It's called Learning Displacement on Demand. And if you have a lot of time, I mean, there's a lot of videos on it because I've had a lot of requests for information on it. So if you are looking to really learn a lot about the system, you can just go ahead and learn with me. It's basically in order from my first, first video on it all the way to my last and current video on displacement on demand. It'll include this one at the very end up until maybe I have to make another video on it. So like, share, subscribe. And if you're a customer, share this with your, your shop that is in question of doing this job if they are afraid of doing it. It is not that scary of a job. It's easy to do, doesn't cost a lot of time, and you can make money because you're gonna be the only shop that gets this job. Most other shops are not going to be taking on this job right now. Take advantage of it. Make your money. Go get some. You know, go go make that money, and uh, you'll have an edge on the market if you start doing this before the other shops in your area start doing it. Hopefully, I will see you on another video. Make sure you have fun fixing these systems, and uh, like I said, go make that money. Thanks for watching.